the good life. And today we're talking about how the good life is Christ living in you. The good life is Christ living in you. I, uh, I don't have a fan today. But I do have an illustration today. All right, can everybody see this okay? The next time that you're standing in your kitchen or your bedroom or at your desk, I want you to look at your drawers. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I want you to look at your, at your drawers. Maybe not the kind you are giggling about, but I want you to look at, 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 at drawers. Sadly... Many people who call themselves Christians live functionally compartmentalized lives. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, so I have, I'm in this compartment at work, and so, I, you know, I do these things. But then when I go to church, I'm this way. And when I'm family, with family, I'm this way. We compartmentalize everything. Come on, can we be honest with ourselves today? Whether... Whether these Christians realize it or not, they have divided their lives neatly into two drawers. A personal life drawer and a spiritual life drawer. That's what that says there if you're having trouble reading it. The personal life drawer, it, it has all the, you know, it has all the stuff that I need every day to do the things that I need to do. Go to the grocery store. Anybody use these bags when you go to the grocery store? Um, yeah, yeah, well, this would be about $100 today. Uh, so, uh, so, you know. But anyway, whatever it may be that I need for my personal life, I, you know, I have, I have in these drawers here, you know, because that, that's, my, that's my personal life, right? And so... So I, I, I stick my personal stuff in there, and every morning when I get up, I open this drawer, and I look at it, and I think about what I got to do today. Come on, don't, don't you do that too? You know, when I get to work, I got to do this, or my kids, uh, something today, my grandkids, I got to, you know, I'm thinking about whatever, the things that I got to do, and the things that I got to be today in those areas, you know, my job, my health, my friends, my family, my leisure time, my possessions, my money, my daily routine, all of that. And that, that drawer usually dominates, when we're talking about people that functionally compartmentalize their lives, they, that's where they spend most of their time, is in that drawer. It dominates their thinking and everything that they do. Spend most of their emotional and physical energy there. It's where most of those people's dreams are either realized or they crumble, is right there in, all, in that drawer. But then there's a, there's a second drawer, though, that I would say, talking about Christians who live functionally, compartmentalized lives, I'm talking about Christians here, this is the spiritual life drawer. And all the God stuff goes in this drawer, you know, Sunday morning, go to church, right? Uh, you know, this, this drawer, uh, that's where my Bible is, right? In that drawer, my, 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 my Christian movies that I, that I like to watch, you know, the magazines and stuff that I, that I read, you know, and Christian magazines, right, right? You know, you know and my, 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 uh, my journal, that I, that I write in and what God's speaking to me and, and my communion time with God, right? That's, that's what's in, those kind of things are what's in that drawer. But for these people, that drawer doesn't get open that much, though. Just when, oh, something, something major is happening. I need to pray. You know, where, where's that prayer life at? Right? Come on. This drawer doesn't get as much use, not as much attention. 
as it needs. Oh yeah, it does, again, get opened at times, even, even weekly. But then as it's thought about, and the other drawer, and the things in the other drawer begin to seem more important because it's the stuff that's yelling at us in the moment. So the spiritual drawer is closed. And the, and the, the other one, the personal life drawer, takes priority. And yes, again, these people believe in Jesus. They believe in his forgiveness and they believe in eternity to come. But somehow their beliefs don't have a radical impact on the way they think about themselves and life in general. Their faith is an aspect of their life, but not something that shapes everything in their life. You know, Jesus doesn't want to be added to your life. <laughs> He's supposed to be your life. There's a scripture that says, you know, when Jesus, who is your life, appears. So, I want us to all examine ourselves today. Right? We may not see ourselves as the one that's in this drawer mostly. But I want us to examine ourselves today and see if we're in that category to some degree. Can we all do that? Ask yourself, on any given day, what most influences the way that I think about myself and my life? Ask yourself, what's the driving factor for the majority of what I think and say and do every day? The biblical worldview has only one drawer, the spiritual life drawer. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ lived out every single day. Everything for the sold out Christian goes in that one drawer. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20 says this, For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You were bought at a price. A high price. The life, the physical life of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus. Innocent blood of Jesus being shed for you. You were bought at a price. Therefore, because of you know this, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's, it says. Listen to me today. If you're a Christian, if you've given him your life, if, if he is Lord of your life, you don't belong to you. You belong to God. Because we belong to God, we are to bring glory to God in our body and in our spirit. God, listen to me, God has a radical single drawer purpose for your life. The best word for that purpose that the Bible uses is the word ambassador. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20 says, so we, speak, so we are Christ's ambassadors. And it says God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. God is making his appeal through us. Elder Ricky this morning said something along those lines when he was sharing a word from the Lord for us. A word of prophecy to us. Come on, have you read in Scripture about prophecy? When a word of prophecy comes, God doesn't always speak just through the pastor, through a message he's prepared. He speaks in other ways, in different ways. And so this is a word from the Lord to us today. And so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. Somebody say he's talking to me. Right? It's all of us. Through us, we speak for Christ when we plead. Come back to God. See, the only thing an ambassador does is represent the ruler who sent them somewhere. Every day, all the time, 
in everything that we do. Therefore, your purpose in life is to make the invisible presence of Jesus visible to the lives of other people. That's your purpose. Let's do it today. You have no other purpose. Sure, you got to go work on your job, but you can work in your purpose there. There's people there that need to know Jesus. When you go to the store and you encounter that same person at the register, every time you... There's your purpose, right? There. No matter what you do, there's your purpose. You got kids? There's your purpose. Instill Jesus in them. Amen. Whatever it is that we do in this life, we have a purpose, and that's to be his ambassador. Listen to me today. You are the look on Jesus' face when you talk to somebody. You are the tone of his voice when you speak to them. You are the touch of his hands when you reach out to them. You are the physical representative of his grace standing before them, whoever they happen to be. This is your mission in every situation, in every location, in every relationship of your life to make the truth of what to them is the invisible king to make it visible to them. Because you are what they see. Do we always do it perfectly? No, we mess up sometimes, but that don't mean we give up. When you mess up, don't give up. Get up and go on. Galatians 2.20, this is our verse for this series. We've read it every week for the past three weeks. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me, and he gave himself for me. I have been crucified. I don't live. Come on, anybody remember the one from two weeks ago? I've been crucified with Christ. I don't live any. That old person, that old nature has been killed, crucified, gone, dead. And the life I now live is a different one. It's Christ who lives in me. I want to talk to you just for a few minutes about Christ living. Christ living. We're supposed to be Christ living. Christ living in you. In you. So, I want, to, I want to hit on three things. The life that I now live, it talks about in this verse, the life that I now live is different than the one I used to live. It's different. It's not the same. I don't keep living the same life. I don't keep living the same way. It's different. The life I live now is better than the one I used to live. I said it's better than the one I used to live. Right? It's not free from trials and tests and hardships, but it's better because Jesus is on my side. He's with me because I'm on his side. It's different. It's better. Number three I want to talk about this morning is the life that I now live is an adventure in the supernatural world of Jesus Christ. It's different. It's better, and it's an adventure. So let's talk about these three things. Number one, Christ living is different. When I'm living for me, the focus is on my personal goals, my personal desires, and my fulfillment in life. It's all about me. The driving before force behind my actions is self-centered. It's seeking personal gain, pleasure, and success. Christ living means surrendering your personal desires and ambitions to align with God's will and his purpose for your life. But we'll get to it in a minute, but that's better. Everything for this person is in the spiritual life drawer. It's in the spiritual life drawer, and the focus is Jesus Christ, what he wants, what he said, who he is. And we have to ask ourselves, are we truly Christ living? Are we truly Christ living? 
Romans 12 and verse 1 from the New Living Translation says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you. How many of you know Paul uh, wrote uh, uh, all these letters? And, and, but no matter who wrote the book in the Bible, the Holy Spirit wrote the book to us. The Holy Spirit wrote the Bible through people. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you. Can you hear the Holy Spirit is pleading with us today? I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and a holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Christ living is giving yourself completely to God. You're not leaving any part out. You, you don't have them separated into different drawers. Everything in my life is in my spiritual life drawer. Giving yourself completely, being a living sacrifice to God. It is the only way to really worship the Lord. This is what it says. It's truly, it's truly the way. It is the only way to worship God is to give yourself completely to him. Listen to me really close today. If Jesus doesn't have our all, we're not really worshiping him at all. Amen or oh me right there, either one would work, right? <laughs> Many of you have heard of uh, C.S. Lewis, Chronicles of Narnia, and he wrote a lot of allegories that relate to revealing who Jesus is. And C.S. Lewis said this, quote, Christ says, give me all. I don't want so much of your time or so much of your money or so much of your work. I want you. I have not come to torment your natural self, but to kill it. <laughs> and then he goes on hand over the whole natural self all the desires which you think innocent as well as the ones that you think are wicked the whole outfit the whole of you he says I will give you a new self instead he's speaking for Christ he says I will give you a new self instead in fact I will give you myself my own will shall become yours. And Psalm 37 and verse 4 reflects that exactly. It says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Listen, I think we take that the wrong way sometimes. Just delight in the Lord and he'll give you everything you want. When you delight in the Lord, when you're Christ living, when everything's in one drawer, when he becomes your all, the desires of your heart will be his desires. The only thing, listen to me today, the only thing that God agrees with is what he has already established to be right and true. He don't agree with nothing else. You can argue with him if you want to, but he will not agree with that. Only what he has already established to be truth is the only thing that he will agree to. So our excuses, come on, this is a little bit hard hitting, but I got to preach it because God told me to. Our excuses, our rights are no longer valid with God because it's all about him. Because not only should we give him the glory, he deserves all the glory. It's all about this new life that he's given to me, and I don't even live it for myself. As a matter of fact, I'm dead. How many of you know dead people don't argue? If you're still arguing with God, you had not died yet. <laughs> and I have to crucify this flesh every day. Man, I did a great job of killing him yesterday, but he, he rose again. That guy's got the most resurrections of any person I've ever known. 
right? <laughs> so that's why Paul says, I die daily. I die daily. I, I'm continually killing the flesh so that God's will can be done in me and through me. Christ living is different. It's different, listen to me today, to some degree it's different than the way that any of us that are hearing the sound of my voice right now are living. Get used to different. Live, live out of one drawer, the spiritual life drawer only. So it's different, and it's hard on the flesh. But secondly, number two, Christ living is better. It's better. It's not just, oh, it's so hard. It's so difficult. It's great. It's better. Living for yourself will lead to bondage. Living for yourself will lead to captivity, whether to sin or pressure from friends, materialism which never satisfies, or the never-ending desire to prove yourself to somebody, that you're good enough. A self-focused life never results in anything good. What it results in is stress, anxiety, and a sense of inadequacy because you're always trying to prove yourself. I don't need to prove myself. I, I want to prove who Jesus is in my life. That's, that's what I need to prove by how I live. Living for yourself is a never-ending need to catch something that is uncatchable. You're, you'll never catch it. We, we read recently in a scripture that talks about trying to catch the wind. That's what it's like. Trying to live for yourself. Living for Christ is not just better. It's the only way to truly live. Amen. We can exist otherwise, but living like Christ, Christ living is the only way to really live. In spite of what your natural mind might think, surrendering your life to Christ sets you free from striving for something that never will fulfill you. You are free to live out your God-given purposes. I love Galatians 5 and verse 1. Galatians 5 1 says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. The reason Jesus sets you free is for you to stay free. And you can be free in him. But it's living this life, a one drawer life. We can be free from sin. We can be free from guilt. We can be free from shame. We can be free from bondage. So don't go back to living for yourself. There's some in the room today, you've been tempted to go back. You've been tempted to go back to a former way or, or you know, maybe it's not all the way back, but just a little ways back. No! Don't do it. The reason Jesus set you free is so you could stay free. He has a better way for you. Sure, we're still in a fight with the devil. But we're walking in victory in Christ. Even when, even when we're in the fight. And we have, listen, we have peace with God. That's, that's almost better than anything else we could have. Peace with God. Instead of having inner conflict, now we have inner peace. Philippians 4 and 7 says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. It's in Him. It's in Jesus. It's, it's through Christ living. The life of Christ is supposed to be lived through you. Living for yourself and getting what you want sounds like it's the way to peace. But it just brings discord in our life. It works against the plan of God. It works against the will of God in our life. And it cultivates dissatisfaction. 
When you're living for yourself, that makes you a wanderer. You're always wandering around looking for something that's going to fulfill you and you never, ever find it. You're a wanderer, always. Living for Christ makes you a settler, not a wanderer. Ephesians 4 and 14 says it like this. No longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of doctrine, of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. He wants you to no longer be infants that just go back and forth between whatever somebody wants to say that sounds good. Hey, let's do that. Let's, oh no, let's do that. You know, we're always chasing something new. We need, we need, to, we need to get back to something old. It's the only thing that will bring you peace is the word of God. And it never changes. So when people today in our culture come up with new ideas of the way it should be, but it goes against what God said, don't entertain it. God said. God said. God said. And God never changes his mind. He is never going to change his mind. Again, the Bible says that his word is firmly established. It's eternally established in heaven. It's established. It's, it's firm. It's secure. It's not movable. Stop being thrown around by everything that someone says or does. Instead, become settled into the ways of Christ and live out his life in your life. Listen to me today. Christ living is better. It's different, but it's better. Live out of one drawer, the spiritual life drawer. Number three, Christ living is an adventure. It's an adventure. So, some, some of us, maybe many of us who have followed Christ for many years, we can recount miraculous things, supernatural things, healings, provision for our life when it looked like there's no way that we're going to be able to pay this bill. Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about today? He came through miraculously. It's an adventure living for God. What if the Lord were, you know, we saw and we read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we read in the book of Acts too, but we, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when Jesus literally walked the earth in human form. Right? And we see all the things that he did, the miracles that happened as he walked here on, on the earth. What if he was here again right now? He is. <laughs> you don't have to imagine it. He's living in you. And you are his hands and feet that reaches out and touches someone, that prays for someone, that gives somebody a word. He's still here. Right? Have you read the book of Acts? It, it, it wasn't the Acts of the Apostles. It was the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. That's what it was. And the Acts haven't stopped yet. The Acts are still happening through people by the Holy Spirit of an Almighty God. And somehow we've accepted that, that that's just back there. That was just for them. The Bible, show me a scripture that said it was supposed to stop. The Bible doesn't say that. So stop believing that. You could be a Peter, a Paul, a James. You could be, you could be Mary and Martha. And God could do miraculous things through you and in you. It's an adventure, but you've got to choose to live it. I said, you've got to choose to live it. I've never seen a miracle in my life. Follow Jesus. Let Christ live through you. You'll see him. Yeah. These signs shall follow those who believe. 
He didn't say these signs will follow just these 12 men. These signs will follow whoever believes. What if the Lord were here right now on the earth? He is in you. In you. Have you accepted him as Lord? If you haven't, today's the day to do it. Today's the day. But if, if, if he's Lord of your life, he's living right here through you, in you. This is the whole point of the good life. And it is so, but if that's so, then the way he lived, miraculous deeds happening, supernatural gifts being on display, provision and healing and salvation. Hmm, how did he live? He lived in absolute obedience to the Father. He said, I don't do anything unless I see the Father doing it. And he said, and I don't even say anything unless he gives it to me to say. What if we lived our life that way? It's how Jesus lived, and he wants to live his life through us. It was a life of adventure. Let's change the was. It is a life of adventure. And since he lives in you, this is what your life should look like. Listen, and I'm not saying we all get it right every day. I'm preaching to me too. My toes got stepped on too as I was getting ready for this. You and I are not fully living that life. But we can. I said, but we can. I said, but we can. <laughs> Who wants to live that life? Amen. Romans chapter 14 and verse 8. It says, if we live... We live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So, it says, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. <laughs> if we live, hey, we're going to live for the Lord. If we die, we're going to die in the Lord. Whether we live or die, we're in the Lord. I would say we, the church today, are living way below what God intends for us. There is no adventure when you are living out of this drawer, primarily. There's no adventure in this. You know, you know, if something happens and we're just living in this drawer, it's what some people call luck. <laughs> if this is all we're doing, because God's not, he's, he's involved right here. Right? And if this is all we're doing, then... Maybe some good things can happen, you know, every once in a while. But not the kind of life I'm talking about. Not the kind of life that Jesus lived. It doesn't happen down here. It happens up here. Nothing truly exciting happens. Why? Because God is living in and through us. If we are living his life here on this earth, if we're walking as Jesus would walk, acting out what he is doing, listen, we would, we would be praying for and witnessing to others regularly and seeing salvations and healings and delivering deliverances and God answering prayers. But listen, come on, let's, let's just be honest. But we're afraid, what if nothing happens? Come on, has that ever happened to you? What if nothing happens? Guess what? It's not up to you to make something happen. It's just up to you to obey him. Leave the doing to him. Leave the miraculous to him. You can't do it anyway. What if something does happen? If we're living like he would live and acting like he acts, out of the 200 people that call this church their church home, most of them would be here every Sunday. Oh, oh, now you're meddling, Pastor. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, yeah, there's times that we're sick and we, and, and we don't want to come spread germs. Okay, there's sometimes some people have to work on a Sunday and you can't help it. Once in a while. Right? 
But like Curvin, he told them, I don't want to work on Sundays. He, he kind of laid down the law to them. You know what? I did that growing up when I had jobs. I told them, you may be open on Sundays, but if you give me this job, I'm not working on Sunday. Sometimes that might not be possible for you. But I'm going to do everything I can do to be here in God's presence with God's people, and I'm not going to sit at home and say I'm tired today. I'm tired on Monday morning, but I get up and go to work anyway. If I can give my job that, I can give Jesus more than that. Come on, somebody. Oh, he, man. He, <laughs> if we were acting like Jesus would act, if we're doing the things that Jesus would do, we would all tithe. I'm not talking about giving five bucks. Did you make $50 this week? Lord, help me. <laughs> the devil says, you're going to run them off. And God said, preach the truth. I said, we would all tithe if we're all living like Jesus would live and doing what Jesus would do. Jesus told Peter, hey, you know what? We owe Caesar some money, Peter said, and so should we do that? He said, go and catch a fish, and in the fish's mouth you'll find <laughs> yeah. And then, and then he said, you know what? He said, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar's, but give God what belongs to God. Whew, my feet are burning. <laughs> if we did that, listen, all of our personal needs would be met because God said, give and it'll be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Amen. And all the church's needs would be met. We would be reaching more people. Come on. And we would, we would be able to fully accomplish the vision that God has for us. If we were walking like Jesus walked, if we were saying the things that Jesus would say, we would all be using our gifts through the local body and in the community, and we would be an unbeatable team for the kingdom of God in reaching this community for Jesus Christ. But we, but we say, you know what, I, I can't do that. Find somebody in Scripture that already thought they could do it when God asked them to do it. You won't find anybody because they all said, I can't do it. Ask somebody else. And God said, I'm asking you. Because when it happens, you know that it's not you. You'll know it's me. And so will everybody else. Because it's all about Jesus. If we were walking like Jesus walked and we were doing the things that Jesus did and we were saying the things that he would say, we would all be ambassadors for the Lord. Listen, I'm going to say this too. By promoting the local church that we attend. We're so afraid today to sound divisive that we sometimes won't even tell the church that we go to. And it is okay if they go anywhere because there's lots of other good churches that preach the word, okay? Okay. I'm not saying we're the only ones. Don't go tell somebody Pastor Greg said that, okay? Because it's not true. See, I've got it recording right now. I can go back and replay it for you, okay? But see, if it's somebody that you know, that you've influenced, that's on your hit list, if it's somebody that you've met, you've talked to, they hear you, they're beginning to trust you, why would you tell them to go somewhere where they don't know anybody? Invite them to come with you. Invite them to come with you. They know you. People stick because they have friends. You and I are supposed to be friends. Not just to our friends. Somebody said one time, we're a friendly church. 
I'm not talking about us right now. We're a friendly church. And a pastor said, every church thinks they're a friendly church because you're friendly to each other. The test of being friendly church is when somebody comes in that you don't know. Oh, well, the welcome team's supposed to take care of that. Thank you, Joe. Did you hear that? We're all the welcome team. Right? <laughs> if we're doing what Jesus would do, if we're saying the things that Jesus would say, when you feel a calling, a tug on your life to join a ministry team or to, to possibly help lead an area of ministry, you wouldn't be afraid to step out and to say, I'm willing to help with that. I see there's a need in that area. I want to do something for the Lord. I want to do something for the kingdom. And he's just kind of put this on my heart. I, whatever I can do to help. Lisa and I were telling a story to somebody recently about when we were really early in our marriage, really early in going, going to church together. We had gone to church separately before that, before we were married, but we went to a different church and we felt a tugging on our heart to help out with kids ministry and to, to help out with kids church on Sunday morning. And so, so we, after church one Sunday, we went to the pastor and we said, we just want to let you know that we just really feel a calling to help with kids, kids' church on Sunday morning, and if there's ever a place for us to serve. What an adventure we would be living if we all fully participated in the life of Christ. If we all lived 100% out of the spiritual drawer and we didn't divide our life up compartmentalize our life. Listen to me today. We can't say that we're in Christ if we're not living out what he's put in. Let me say it again. We can't say that we're in Christ if we're not living out what he has put in. Thinking that we're okay just because we said some words one time in a church, but today we're not living out what he's telling us to do. Let me say, that's foolishness. God gives us direct instructions once we're saved. Once we come into that relationship with Jesus, we want to give back because he gave his all on the cross for us. He shed his blood for us. He died a cruel, cruel death for us. He did not deserve it because he was innocent. We owe him everything. Our whole life, not part of it. Not, not this part, but we keep this. It doesn't work that way. It's either all or not at all. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll, you'll keep my commandments. See, we, we don't talk about those verses very much. If you love me, you'll do what I say. You'll follow me. You'll be obedient to me. We are to live like we love him. We live our life like we love him. Living out of the spiritual drawer all the time. One more verse. Philippians 2 and verse 12. This is from the New Living Translation. It says, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I'm away, it's even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. Let me read that again. Work hard to show the results of you. It doesn't say work hard for your salvation. There's no work you can do to earn your salvation. But once you are saved, work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Another translation says work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I say, I say it like this. Work out what he has placed in. Everything that you need for life and godliness is in Christ, and he's put it in you. Work it out. Work it out. Work it out. We're not living the good life until we stop living our personal life and start living the Christ-living way. 
you and I don't really believe the Word of God until we live it daily. We really don't believe the Word of God until we live it daily. This means Christ's will being number one in every decision, every action, everywhere, every time, all the time. Do we mess up sometimes? Yes, that's why there's a thing called repentance and forgiveness. I messed up, God. I didn't do what you called me to do. Lord, please forgive me. Guess what he does? He forgives you. Then get back up and go at it again. This good life is not you or I getting to do what we want, but Christ getting what he wants through you and me. It's different. It's a different life. But it's a better life. It's an adventurous life. The end result of it is you being blessed. Guess what? When the power of God flows through you, when you're praying for someone and they're healed, guess what? You get it too. Right? I mean, because it's, it's you. It's in you. Right? When you give somebody a word, a scripture that God places on your heart and it just blesses them and tears come in their eyes and you don't know what that means to me, they say to you, and man, what a feeling that you get. The God used me. I can't believe he used me. That's the, what, that's the feeling he wants you to have every day of your life in some form, in some way. Living out of one drawer, the spiritual life drawer. You know what I think we ought to do? Let's, yeah. I need to put all this stuff, all this stuff goes in my spiritual life drawer. I don't need any other drawers. <laughs> I might need some help in this thing holding up here. I need a dresser with one drawer. I need a life with one drawer. We remove the personal life drawer completely. Yeah, because God already said he cares about all that stuff. He said, I know you need food to eat. I know you need clothes to wear. Your father knows you need these things. Matthew 6. And then in verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things that you need will be added to you. Let your heart become one with his heart. He wants what's best for you. Don't let your circumstances dictate what you do. Live out Christ's life by letting him live through you. Do what Jesus would do. Say what Jesus would say. If you're going to live, live for the Lord. Completely. All the way. All in. It's the only way to truly live. Will you stand with me? Let me just ask you today, right now, who that's here with us today or watching online, who wants to be all in with the Lord completely? It's the only way to truly live.